What's going on everyone? In a previous video, we did a brief unboxing of the Jabra Panacast 50 video bar system, which is the Android based video bar system from Jabra featuring both a front of room base unit or the video bar as most of us might refer to it. And then the 10.1 inch HD touch controller that sits in the center of that conference room, giving you uh, up close and personal control over your meeting from the table. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to connect these devices together over the network using the provided cables, the mounting hardware, and getting them connected online so that you are ready to use it as a Microsoft Teams room or Zoom room system. Now, as we covered in the unboxing video, there are three simple steps to setting up your VBS. Step one involves mounting the VBS to, or I should say the base unit, the bar itself, to the wall or wherever you're gonna place it. There are three options for this. The first is the included wall mount. That would be this handy little metal uh, component right here. It's got four little prongs on the front that click into the back of the bar, and then a little arrow that shows you which direction to keep the bar, and then of course two holes for the screws that you will use to secure this onto the wall or whatever sur surface you're attaching it to. Optionally, we can use a table stand, which lets the device sit on a surface at the front of the room, or you can use a screen mount. Both the table stand and screen mount are optional accessories that you need to order through Jabra or wherever you're getting them from. Now in this video, we are going to use the screen mount option. We have a separate video that we'll link to that shows you how to use the screen mount, unboxing it, all that good stuff. But what we're gonna do here is use the included wall mount to attach to the screen mount. So while this is really handy, it gives you the template that you'll need for positioning the screws directly underneath the display, getting your holes just right. Uh, and it shows you how to put the wall mount where it needs to be for wall mounting. Our step one is gonna involve attaching this to the back of the video bar system and then getting it attached to the screen mount. Now with the back of our base unit visible, we're gonna take the wall mount, even though we're going the screen mount route, we need to attach our screen mount to this wall mount. So. We're gonna take the wall mount. We see how we've got these little prongs up here, four of them, and these prongs will line up to the holes we see at the back here. So we're gonna put them all into place, kind of get it nice and flush, and then we will slide it up. And once we do, we hear it click into place. Now, it is in place. Just by sliding it, it clicks. It's locked, it's not coming off. The way to remove it would be underneath. We've got these little sliding, uh, uh, I don't know what you wanna call them, levers or something. We would slide these down and by sliding it down and holding it down, you can then pull the wall mount off of the back of the base unit. Now in this shot, we are jumping ahead just a little bit because we can see in here, I've already got cables plugged in, but I wanted you to see that once we've got this wall mount in place, we've got the official Jabra Panacast 50 screen mount right here. It is attached via the provided uh, hardware that comes with the screen mount it is attached to the two holes at the back of the wall mount. So we've got a screen mount attached to a wall mount, which is attached to the Panacast 50 video bar system. And then all the cables will run out the back of the device and down the screen mount, making sure that your cables are hidden from view at the front of the device. But this is how you would use the screen mount. Now, if you're gonna do just the wall mount, imagine you've got this already attached, as we just did a moment ago, to the base unit, and now you're putting the screws through those holes into the wall, or again, whatever you're attaching it to at the front of the room. With step one out of the way, which is the mounting of the base unit, well, let's go ahead and take a look at how the cabling goes. First things first, our base unit needs power. So we take the provided uh, power supply and the cable, we connect them up. On this end, we'll remove that little protective plastic. We'll plug that in later when we're ready. And then we'll take this end of the power supply and we will plug it in to the back of the base unit. As I mentioned, we'll be using a single HDMI cable for this particular video, but note you can use two of them. Now, if you take a closer look at these HDMI ports, you'll see that they're labeled. HDMI in is over to the far left. Then we've got HDMI out two next to that and HDMI out one. Since we're only using one display, we'll connect our HDMI cable to that port. 
Now, because our base unit is not just a really fancy, really pretty, super powerful video bar at the front of the room, it also has an operating system, and that operating system needs to be able to connect to the internet for the Teams or Zoom room application that's running, and it needs to connect to the touch controller over the network. So we need to plug in a LAN cable here. Let's go ahead and plug our ethernet into this port below. And this is again, the provided cable that came in the box, part of step two. Now the cable that I'm not gonna show you connecting right here is the USB cable that goes back to our ViewSonic view board. Uh, which is not your average use case, right? The average use case is going to be a conference room where you've got the Panacast control sitting in the center of table and it connects to the bar over the network, not physically. However, to allow you to use the touch capacity of the ViewSonic view board with the Teams room system or Zoom room system, we need to connect that via USB. So when we're all set up and done, that will be connected. For now, this is what we have. And with all of our cables in place, we're gonna end up taking this and rolling it back up to the position we want it. The cables will all just kind of route out the top, they're connected, and now we're ready to connect this to either the wall or a screen mount or whatever the case may be. Step three involves getting our Panacast control connected to both power and the network, which is done through a single PoE cable, which is provided in the box. So we're all in luck there. Good stuff. Now, why do we need that one cable? Because with PoE, it's going to give us both power and network connectivity. And the network connectivity is what we connect back to the base unit with. They do not connect directly to each other with USB or category cable or anything other. They connect over the network. It is IP based. I love that fact. So let's turn this thing around, unscrew each of these screws, remove the back panel, and you're gonna have to decide, are we routing the cable out the bottom of the device? If we are, then we're going to pop that little circle out of there. If we're not gonna route it out the bottom and through the table, we're gonna route it out the back, so we're gonna have a visible cable on the table. There's a little slot here that the cable will run through. It's rubber, it's tight, it makes sure that the cable is not gonna be tugged on or crimped or anything bad. Now, where do we actually plug this into? As you can see, there are no visible ports from this angle. If we come on in, we can kind of see right down in there, we've got our ethernet port at the very bottom. So we're going to take this cable and plug it in right down here. There you go, you see that plugged in, we are clipped into place. Now I'm not gonna run this through the, uh, the bottom of the device. I'm gonna bring it, route it around this little center area, and then we'll tuck it neatly into this ridge here. With it tucked into the ridge, we'll now return the bottom where it goes, getting everything lined up, screw these back into place, and we have the Panacast control connected to the cable it needs to be connected to. Now, as we see here, the Panacast control has the cable it needs connected in the way we need it connected. If we have PoE switches in our environment and we can connect this cable, directly into one of those ports providing power and internet connectivity, then we are golden, good to go. If we don't have PoE enabled switches, we only have connectivity to the network, then we still need to provide power and that's what this little PoE uh, power injector brick is for. You can see one of these is gonna go to this cable and one will go to this cable and then we will attach the power cable to the other side. Let's get that all set up. First things first, we'll take off the little protective plastic clip. We'll take the other end of that power cable and connect it into the back side of our PoE injector. Once we got the power cable plugged in, we can see we need to plug in two ethernet cables here. Now, up at the very top, it is labeled LAN and PoE. So this side is gonna go back to our LAN and this side is going to connect our Panacast control, giving it power over ethernet. So I'll take the cable that was already plugged into the Panacast control and plug it into the PoE port. And now we'll take the other, the second provided cable that is in step three in the box, and we'll connect that to the LAN port. Now, the other end of this is gonna go back to whatever switch we've got connecting into our network. Over the network is how the Panacast control and the Panacast 50 VBS base unit will talk to each other. Now this particular setup is a bit unique. Over at the far side of this image, you'll kind of see that we've got some Panacast 50s 
Uh, on the wall over there, we've got a table stand that is sitting on a surface. We've got a wall mount that is mounted to the wall. So you can kind of see those traditional applications where the device is at the front of the room, attached to the wall or sitting on a surface at the front of the room. In this case, this is a mobile unit. You maybe want an all-in-one cart that can be wheeled around, moved from place to place, that gives you in-room touch collaboration with your Teams rooms or Zoom rooms experience. In this instance here, we have paired the Panicast 50 video bar system with a 55 inch ViewSonic viewboard. This lets us not only touch the Panicast control down here to uh, control the device right here from this stand or if we're sitting at a table, but we can also come up to the board and touch to join our meetings to manage the meeting. If we need to do a little bit of whiteboarding in the meeting, there are included pens to do that. So this gives us that uh, traditional digital whiteboard experience with the Panacast 50 video bar system and a mobile solution. So there it is, the Panacast 50 video bar system. Three simple steps to get it all cabled up, mounted, and set up in whatever application you're gonna be using today. As always, hope you found this helpful. All the regular social media stuff, like it, share it, subscribe, you know the drill. Thanks for your support, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another one of these videos someday soon in which we are actually going through the process of pairing them on screen and getting a Teams rooms and Zoom rooms applications set up on the Panacast 50 video bar system.